When we talk about the lore, there is nothing better to start but from the very beginning, when the creators create the universe, when the gods walk the land, and when the time starts to tick. Who are these gods, and who are the worshippers? Let's take a quick look in this video. Elion, the god of light and fire, the patron god of the Valkyries. He is a benevolent god that created the lands, the plants, and the animals of the world. Or at least, that is what the Church of Elion is preaching. The religion of Elion, called Elionism, has far predates the founding of the Kingdom of Calfion, and believed to have started way back at the time of the ancients, during the Tower of Will incident. Nowadays, the main church of Elion is located in Calfion City, and has expanded throughout the whole Serendia and Balanus regions, with churches also located in the city of Heidel and Velia. To further the faith of Elionism, warriors of light were being trained by the church, initially inspired by the fighting capability and grace of the former knight, Enslor, nicknamed the Valkyrie, her fairy red hair and battle prowess with weapon twice her size makes her stood out everywhere and believed that she has the blessing of Elion to wield such weapon. The church has published the treatise of Valkyries, which is named after Enslor, then proceed to build the Holy College of Calfion dedicated to train the deserving and make them the poster warriors of the Church of Elion. In recent times, however, the Church is infiltrated with the corrupted members of the Guards of Dawn, which we might cover in our next videos, and well, they now call themselves as the Fraternity of Light, which had made the Church do questionable things in the name of the God of Light. This includes the disappearance of Enslar and the failed summoning of Zarka, and with Elion not intervening since the supposedly first known contact in the ancient times, it begs us the question, does Elion even truly exist? There has been no known physical manifestation of the God of Light, and so it is up to your fate to believe in him. Al is the God worshipped by the Kingdom of Valencia and to some extent, the region of Medea. Alism teaches the Seven Commandments, which are religiously followed by its followers. A yearly pilgrimage is also being done to constantly remind the followers of all about his commandments. Though sometimes fatal, going to the desert and stuff, completing the pilgrimage throughout the desert is one of the secret tasks a follower ought to do, and one that many Valencians are willing to risk their lives in completing. The pilgrimage usually start at the Sanctum Fast, located just west of the city of Valencia. The followers usually does not take any form of food and drinks until they reach the second Sanctum, which is not really a good idea when you cross a desert. But this is to remind the followers about Al's teaching to suppress their desires and overcome hardship of life. Fast is the most important commandment. Breaking this commandment will make you ineligible to return to paradise. The second sanctum called obedience is the first virtue of the seven commandments. It teaches people to accept Al as the one true God and the core of Alan teaching. Obedience is believing and following Lord Al absent of doubt. A life of obedience is a life of belief. The third sanctum called abstinence, located south of Ebelab Oasis, teaches its followers to suppress bodily and mental desires in order to walk with the Lord. Abstinence is managing the mind with rationality to guide oneself away from self-indulgence. The fourth sanctum called Sharing, located at the middle of the Great Desert, teaches to donate to the poor, making the Kingdom of Valencia free from starving populace. And well, it is a popular place for traders as the sanctum of sharing basically also increases your trade profit when you trade within the city of Valencia. Share with your neighbor, share your heart and property. The fifth sanctum called Purity teaches Alans to stay away from anything corrupt, while the sixth sanctum called Humility, which is found to the far south of the Great Desert, requires its followers not to flaunt and avoid arrogance which is one characteristic that many Valencians hate. Alans ought to be modest. 
accomplishments are not made by oneself, but given by Lord all. And finally, the last commandment, located in the seventh sanctum called sincerity, which teaches to be diligent in your everyday life. However, this is the commandment that many Valencians have difficulty in achieving, as the richness of the kingdom and the commandment to sharing to the poor makes a lot of Valencians to be lazy. But those who are not lazy are very much well adored. Lord all said, one that has earnestly given works shall enter the paradise. And to end the pilgrimage, one visits the pilgrim's haven, believed to be the birthplace of the god Al, and currently the grave of the fallen soldiers on the past war between Calfian and Valencia. Which makes it quite disrespecting for the adventurer's part to just continuously mine the stones. I mean, you are mining the graves of the soldiers, for what? To make cooking utensils? Well, I hope you got some conscience the next time you do it. The next god, or goddess, is Sylvia, the patron goddess of the elves. It is said that Sylvia came down from the heavens together with the nature spirit eons ago and planted a great tree, Kamasulv, creating a new life with the energy of the sun and the moon. Beneath the Kamasulv tree, she bore two children to reflect the two bodies, Ganel in resemblance of the sun and Vidir in resemblance with the moon. A third child of Sylvia was born through the door of Kamasov tree in a different dimension known as the root realm. She named her son Lutragon, and he resembled the earth. One day, Sylvia sealed her will and energy within the sacred tree. Before departing to return to the heavens, she made her final request to the elves to raise a prosperous civilization. The said heaven, however, is also being hinted as an alternate realm, and Sylvia is known to came from a different realm which the god of darkness Hodum has taken over. And speaking about the god of darkness, Hodum, like Sylvia, came from a different realm and supposedly connected to the black stones and the black spirit. Though rarely mentioned so far, but Hadum has been part of some of the greatest tragedies in the world, well at least at the behest of his followers. The earliest of such recording is the destruction and fall of Grand Castle led by the immortal alchemist named Capras, which is once the chief of the Lutragon clan. Another tragedy recorded with what the elven race called the Disaster of Darkness, in which Black Spirit has invaded Camisylvia, causing the death of the Great Tree. And lastly, the Black Death, a terrible disease rotting black the flesh of its victim without mercy or exception, which is supposedly caused by Hadun's realm creeping into the world we live in. We may see more of him in the future, and maybe even Elezra, and even you the adventurer, is connected to this god. Now, moving on to some lesser gods and deities, which includes the following. Ganel, Sylvia's child who was created in resemblance of the sun, sibling to Vidir, and matron figure of her descendants, who are also called Ganel as a group collective. The majority of these elves desire to live in harmony and communion with the elemental spirits, as with their resemblance to the sun, they are very often righteous and zealous when angered. Vidir, Sylvia's child created in resemblance to the moon, sibling to Ganel, and matron figure of her descendants, who are also called Vidir as a collective group. The majority of these elves believe that the elemental spirits should obey them and that the spirit's power should be subjugated and harnessed. It is one of Vidir's descendants, Josia Odore, who insisted upon amplifying the power of Kamasilv by burning its essence, repealing the black spirit during the disaster of darkness. Lutragon, the third child of Sylvia and the patron of the elven archers. Not much is known about him except the fact that he was born in a different realm to protect the roots of the Kamasilv tree. Nark is an ancient spirit from the root realm and noted to use a spear. He is the ruler of water and drain. Their symbol is a symbol of Ahib. These elves pray to Nark, asking for rain to quench the arid lands. With these blessings, they grow ivy from which they are able to extract magical power and prepare to siege Kamasilvia. Despite being associated with the Ahib, Nark is not inherently evil. On the night when the Dark Knights escaped from Kamasilvia with the help of the Tooth Fairies, the goddess Sylvia appeared before Nark and asked that he watch over her with their children, to which he agreed. Agress, 
a deity worshipped in Belenus prior being taken over by Calphion and Ilionism. Magoria, the goddess of the wave and the namesake of the great part of the ocean. And lastly, Asula, the god deity in Medea. Although many of the Medeans already worship Al, but they are not as zealous like the Valentians, and most likely converted to Alism in order to have better trading status with the kingdom of Valencia. Many still believe in Asula, which was born on the rumbling land at the very beginning of time. And so that ends a chapter of our lore book, a tiny grain of story in a deserted land of Black Desert.